All right. So real cloth, uh, like I said, is one of my favorite uh, features in key shot as someone who's done a fair amount of soft goods products and even pro hard goods that, that incorporate some sort of, of cloth material or cloth finish. This is an invaluable tool right now. What you're seeing is uh, that same scene from Magnus. We have, 3D ply enabled, so you can get an idea of what that looks like. You can see that there's little white dots in between the actual threads. That's the light passing through. You can see how it reacts to curves in the actual fabric and where fabric is bunched over. Very realistic, uh, a big step up, in my opinion, from, from single ply and, and two-sided ply. But let's, let's take a look at that material and let's see what those different ones look like. So under display, when you're in your property sub tab is where you're gonna be able to switch between single-sided, two-sided and 3D ply. As usual, if you hover over of them, they'll give you a quick tip, uh, which kind of gives you a little bit of background information on what each of those does. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump over single-sided because that's kind of what we're used to in Keyshot 9, give you an idea of what that looks like. Yeah, so now, now we're in single-sided ply. Um, if you saw a second ago, there was a lot of light coming through individual threads throughout this, this uh, actual material here. And that really lent to creating a more believable material. You can still see the flyaways that exist. You can still see uh, some light cascading. It does look very realistic, but the 3D ply just gives it a little bit of an edge. And uh, Derek actually used this as a description recently. Basically, think about single-sided ply as a piece of paper where cloth was attached to one side, and you're looking at that one side. And you can actually, let me go into free camera, you can kind of see that going on right here, where one side has uh, the flyaways attached to it versus one side does not. So that's that's basically one-sided ply. You, your normals are only coming off in one direction. Uh, in Keyshot 9, you could flip normals depending on, on what you were working with and, and what you were trying to accomplish. But in, in Keyshot 10, you can do two-sided ply now. I'll go ahead and update that and, and you'll see the difference between one-sided and two-sided. Okay, so yeah, this is, this is two-sided ply. Basically, you're getting that same effect Instead of just on one side, you're now having it on two side apply. And this is like having a piece of cloth glued on one side of a piece of paper with another piece of cloth sandwiching it on the other side. So light is still not quite passing through. You're not getting that same realistic behavior that you would get out of 3D ply. But both single ply and two side apply are a great way to create cloth like surfaces while still kind of uh, reducing the computing power required to, to, to make your scenes work, especially if you're doing animations. Um, um, if you don't have a computer that's like really powerful, it's gonna benefit you to work with single-sided or two-sided ply uh, because it'll require a lot less calculations. Uh, I love using 3D ply at this point. I think it's incredible. And uh, let's actually take a close look at the 3D ply strands versus uh, the single-sided or the two-sided so you can get an idea of the big difference there. So let's take a peek, um, but maybe if we do performance mode. Okay, so there you go. You can get an idea. It's a, it's a little dark, but you can see the individual strands actually look like, like threaded yarn. Uh, they're actually weaving inside each other. There's curvature to them. Uh, they feel very realistic. And you can even see here zoomed in that you're getting light peeking through. So that's, that's really what kind of gives it this, this more realistic appearance. And you can see here in the background too, where there's, there's visibility through the entire material. Um, we're literally looking at digital cloth at this point. It's, it's really an awesome feature. And let me, let me look back at uh, two-sided versus single-sided so you can get an idea of the difference of, of what that looks like. All right, so that should have updated by now. Um, you can see like up, up close at macro views, it's not quite as realistic as 3D ply. Um, but you know, when you zoom out, you're, you're getting a very realistic looking cloth. Uh, and if you use transparency, that kind of helps increase how believable it is when you're using single-sided and two-sided. But again, that three-dimensionality of threads doesn't exist with those two. 
only 3D ply. And, and that's also uh, kind of leading us into that mesh workflow that I'm talking about, because you're going to need to use 3D ply to use the new mesh workflow. It won't work for single-sided or two-sided. So let's jump into that, and I will show you how to make a metal mesh. Um, so I have a multi-material right here set up with a metal mesh already applied, just so I can kind of introduce you to it. The scene's lighting isn't perfect. Let me see if changing the environment helps a little bit. OK, yeah. So this is a simple metal mesh I created using the 3D ply geometry. Uh, to do this, you're going to have to use the uh, material graph. So it is something that Keyshot Pro users are going are gonna to have to take advantage of. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click that material and open the material graph to show you what's going on here. So you can ignore this top material because that is our actual real cloth. And down here is what we're working with for our, our mesh material. Essentially, to create this, what I've done is I've applied a real cloth and I started working from a, a, a real cloth, in this case, the, the plain weave mesh. And I removed the real cloth element to it from the surface and I applied it to geometry. I then used a metal material from the library and I applied that to the surface and was able to adjust the color uh, to, to more accurately reflect the type of metal that I, I wanted to, to use. And I'm gonna see if I can do this for you guys real quick by, by making another one. So I started off with real cloth and I used a plain weave mesh. I'm gonna use the white one here and drop it into my multi-material. And so this is what we're working with at this point. Now, again, something to uh, uh, remember is that you need to use 3D ply. So right now we're connected to the surface. I'm going to go ahead and not use 3D ply just to show you what will happen. Um, throw it in a geometry. You kind of get this uh, blue cross-hatched UV kind of uh, uh, material that appears on your, your screen. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab a metal material, uh, metal polished white, and I'm gonna plug it into my surface. So without 3D ply, this should just look like a metal material applied to the top. So if you're struggling, this is the issue that you're having right here. You have to go into your real cloth and you need to select 3D ply geometry. And when that decides to update, you should have a metal mesh at the same scale that your real cloth is set to. It's that easy, much simpler than, than previous workflows for creating metal meshes. So, you know, whether, whether it's a, a product that has a metal mesh, whether it's a vehicle grill, um, plastic mesh materials for, for some sort of basketry or something, this is a incredibly quick uh, solution to creating that kind of material. Awesome workflow. Uh, I think it's a lot easier than Keyshot 9. So if that's what you're trying to do, this is the way to go about it.